Hello and welcome to this tutorial video on how to paint a ragdoll face. You can download the pattern and instructions for this doll from our website, just follow the link below. For this project you're going to need a piece of cloth, we're using pre-washed calico, a template that you can download free from our website, a pattern piece for your doll head, a variety of paint brushes and we're using acrylic paint. I'll go through the colours as we go along. If you'd like a refresher in cutting out the doll's head, please pop over and have a look at video 2 in the Ragdoll Making Tutorial series. A lamp inside a plastic tub is the second simplest light box in the world. I think the simplest being a lamp with a lampshade. In either case, place your template over the top. You might want to put a little bit of sellotape on here to hold it in position. And the same with your pre-cut pattern piece. Pre-cut because then you're sure that the features are in exactly the right place. And once you've done that, you can see that you can see the features through this, but it's even better with a light behind it. There you go. And then using a fine pencil, trace the features onto your fabric. And even on this particularly robust calico, you can see the features really clearly. I've taped my doll's face down onto a piece of board as much for ease of filming as ease of painting. Also, keep your off cuts of fabric. They're going to be useful to test how wet your paint is, how well that works on your fabric, and also for testing colour as you go along. And we're ready to start painting. Now, do a little test before you get started. Draw an eye on a scrap of that fabric that you've got and paint over the top. I know from experience that when I'm painting with my titanium white acrylic mixed with a little bit of water, I can paint right over the top of the inner lines of the eye and when my paint is dry I'll still be able to see clearly enough the lines of the iris and of the pupil. So I can just go over the whole of the eye. This gives us a lovely bright layer to work on top of which really makes the eye shine. As you can see I've speeded up the video a little bit or, or have I? Maybe this is actually the speed at which I paint. You'll never know. <laughs> so don't be afraid to go right to the edge. That's another tip. It can be a little scary. You might think you're going to go over the edge. Don't worry too much. If you stay too far within that outer line, you're going to reduce the size of the eye. And we want this eye to be nice and big. There you go. If you find you can't, once you've done your little test, see the the lines through the paint, then just do the white. Use a fine brush and just do the, the white areas of the eye. Now I could keep messing with this forever but I think we're about done there. While our white's drying I'm going to do a little bit of shading around the eye. So I have white and raw umber and I'm going to mix them together to give me a colour that I'm happy to use as a shade around the eyes. I'm going to mix it in. This is a, a stiffer bristled brush and I'm going to use a scrap piece of fabric to remove an awful lot of that paint and I'm going to dab it on there and then when that's mostly off I'm going to use this stippling action around the eye and shade to give it some shape and some depth. And we can use this on the lips in a little while as well, it'll be that same colour. So just a stippling action, just dabbing it on. Don't worry if you go over the white again. We're going to come back and we're going to outline those eyes in a little while. So what we're trying to do here is give some shape to the eyes and some shape to the folds of the eyelid and underneath the eye. I think if you're, if you're into your makeup, which I have to admit, I'm into makeup like I'm into housework and cooking, which is not very much at all, then I think what we're looking for here is the smoky eye effect and make sure that when you go back to your plate or your palette and bring paint on you dab most of it onto your onto your spare piece of cloth and then when your paintbrush is almost dry smudge and smear that colour in just dab it in so that you're giving it some shading you don't have to be too fussy with it, it doesn't have to be perfect there we go and that's nice we can always come back and do a bit more if you're not happy with it when you've done 
more of the, the outlining and that but I'm happy with that as it is for now. I've taken that same mix of raw umber and white but with a bit more water added this time and the brush a little more loaded so that I get a deeper flatter colour and I'm doing a base coat on her lips. It's a nice natural colour which I think suits this doll. Up to you if you want to get creative. There's a whole world of colour right there for you to play with. And at this point, as I say, we're just going for a base coat. We're just filling in the outlines. And that'll do fine. Mwah. <laughs> if you've ever really looked deeply into somebody's eyes, taken a look at their irises, you'll know how stunningly beautiful the human eye is. I'm using a bit of sap green mixed with my titanium white and look at that beautiful spring green colour. It's a, it's a bit too vibrant for the eye that I'm painting at the moment so I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine because there's turquoise in the outfit for the doll that we're making and it would be nice to reflect that in her eye colour. And I'm using lots and lots of white in this because this is a base colour and I'm going to add some water because if your paint is too thick when you're doing this section, it's hard to keep your outlines accurate. One of the reasons I like to do a white base coat when I'm doing an, an eye is that coloured acrylics particularly have a translucency and that allows the white to shine through and it really gives the, the eye life, really gives it a glow. I'm going to work from the other side of the table. You can just turn your pattern piece upside down. If you look at a face upside down, your brain breaks it down into the component parts. When you look at a face the right way up and you're looking directly at it, your brain tends to, to even out any inaccuracies. So I want to find those inaccuracies as I'm looking at my eye. And if I do find any, there's a little bit on the right eye where I've gone a little bit too far. I'm going to come back in a bit and do the white on that and just even it up. That's a great thing. You can just come back with your white paint, even up those little bits. Because we're going to outline it as well, I'm going to use a, another bit of green and blue in here to make a deeper turquoise colour and start outlining it. There we go. So I'm going to go all the way around the outside of the pupil. A bit of water all the way around the outside of the pupil to start giving it some shape. I'm also going to do under the lid here because under the lid there would be a tiny bit of shadow even though it's only a tiny bit of shadow you get under the lid and if you're going to put lashes on later under the lashes there is a shadow under there and again it gives it gives it reality and it gives it life. A bit more colour. I'm going to put the white in there just reshape that area yeah that's better a little tiny bit more there you go a bit more blue and green and you can start to add little lines like the the spokes of a wheel going from the outside to the inside of the eye once you've done this outline um, and those are the little flecks of colour you get in. They always go from the outside to the inside of the eye. And they can be lots of different colours. You can add blue bits, you can add green bits that will make up the, the turquoise colour that we want on this one. A bit more shading under the lid there. And then I'm going to add a little bit of white back to this because the area that's going to be where the light catches my eye, I want a tiny bit more light on that side. Just again to pick up those muscles that contract and expand to open and close the, the pupil. Let's go back to that shading colour of raw umber and white and add a bit more raw umber to it to darken it because I want to use this to shade the crease in the eyelid. So as before I'm going to take most of it off on a scrap of cloth and with the stiff bristled paintbrush again I'm going to just dab it in and it's better to have too little and just keep going over it than put a big blob of colour on there that's hard to remove 
and once you've used most of the paint upon there, wipe it off and then smudge it in again with an almost dry paintbrush. Another little bit of shading, something quite subtle, processed black and raw umber and lots and lots of water this time to make a very watery wash. I'm using a soft paintbrush and I'm just going to do a shadow again onto the white and across the iris. That's a shadow cast by the eyelid again. It's another little bit of definition. It's quite subtle, but it's important. And with those same colours and not quite so watery, I'm going to start outlining the eye. Now, practice this first. Make sure your line is going to be thin enough because the last thing we want is something heavy and black here. So this is that combination of processed black and raw umber that's a nice sepia colour. And I'm going to go all the way around both of the eyes. To form the outline of the lids and then into that crease in the depths of the, that shadow that we painted in. That same colour with a little bit more black added is going to give you the colour for the pupil of the eye. Now this has to be dark, this is the opening into the centre of the eye. But we don't want it to be harsh, so I like to leave a little bit of raw umber in there still. Now the other important thing is that these two pupils have to be even. If you have one pupil that is smaller than the other, your doll's going to look concussed. So take your time. If there's one point during painting this face that I would say, wash your brushes, go and put the kettle on, take a break, come back and look at it afresh, this would be it, but don't leave your paintbrushes in the water, you'll ruin the bristles. This is the bit that always takes me longest. I keep going backwards and forwards and just adjusting a little bit. Until I'm absolutely happy. You might want to get a biscuit as well. This is going to take me a while. I tell you what, just bring the packet. We'll share. Right, that's it. I think I'm... I'm going to use the very watery paint that we used to do the shadow across the eyeball under the eyelid. I'm going to use that to put a little bit of shading in between the lips. So this is a little wash I'm going to put on here and then we'll leave this to dry for a while. And that just gives a bit of shape to the lips. That sienna colour that we created with our processed black and raw umber. I'm going to put a couple of dots just at the corner of the mouth and then with my finest paintbrush again and quite a thin paint I'm going to do a stylized M shape that I've traced onto here that gives us the line between the lips. It's another one that we want to be quite even and quite delicate. Although if it's not even, it's, it's not a biggie. She could be doing a little quirky smile. There we go. Our irises of the eye have had a chance to dry. So I'm going to go back again with my deeper colours and I'm going to outline them once again. But this time with a really deep turquoisey colour. This gives me a real clear outline around the iris. 
and over the top under that shadowed bit I'm going to make the as we look at it now the left hand side of my eye a slightly darker side I'm going to bring the light in on the right hand side of the image so each of the irises on the left hand side I'm going to add some of these deeper stripes of colour always going from the outside into the centre always now bringing the light in on the opposite side a very pale turquoise just touches on this right hand side of the iris I'm going to bring in a little bit of white just to add a highlight to the bottom lip first of all just blend it in a little bit with your paintbrush just the top edge the center top edge of that bottom lip and again a few little lines is quite nice lips seem to have these little creases blend it in tiny bit at the top same watery sienna colour we're going to use to add the eyebrows don't make them too thick I just do a few little strands like this and this will give a little bit of definition to the face a little bit of the very expressive eyebrows they're very characterful and they relay emotion this is where your template so useful because the shape that this will make when it pulls together is, is completely different. And now, turn a little bit more shading around here. This is the point where I can see where I want to add a little bit extra. And I can use that same watery sienna colour to add a bit more shading where I want it. That's it. That's done. Now, you can stop here. This is as far as the template goes, but if you want to add eyelashes, we'll talk you through that now. We didn't include it in the template because it can make the lines very messy and difficult to follow, but we're using the same sepia. They're slowly built up by adding little lines that are longer on the outer part of the eye and usually on the upper lid very small lines that we slowly build up so that you don't overdo it so it's not too heavy slowly build them up always radiating out again like that spokes of a wheel idea again and keeping your very very fine paintbrush with quite a thin paint on it so that you don't get clumps suddenly forming that can happen if you use cheap mascara apparently and I'm just going to continue to go over and over this this is one of the sections where you just will keep coming back to it so do stop if you need to go and have a cup of tea and a biscuit come back keep having a look at it and tinkering until you're happy with it For me on this section at the moment that's just about all I want to do I want to leave this and start having a look at the mouth so the mouth here I'm going to add a little bit of that deeper shading just to, to give it a little definition well, I've got this already mixed up and this is the same slightly deeper color that we used on the shading on the eyes on the lids of the eyes so a little tiny bit there to give it a dimple and just to define the outer shape of the lip and a little bit at the bottom of the lip there just, just plumps the lips up a little bit this shading does 
and this is the bit that's really going to bring it to life we're going to put the dots of light in the eye make sure they're on the same side so in this case on the right side of each eye they are indicated on the template I'm doing two little tiny dots this is the finishing touch for me and just a little tiny bit more shading if you're enjoying this and you want to practice without worrying about wasting fabric then just use a piece of paper use your same template trace over the top as as you've done with your fabric and just keep practicing try different colors try different styles try changing the eye shape you'll find several different templates on our website that will give you a good starting point I'm going to cheat now and put the head together so you can see what she looks like. Don't forget you can get the pattern and instructions as an instant download on our website. Just check out the link below. You can also on the same site find the free templates for several different styles of face. That concludes our tutorial video. I hope it's been helpful. If it has please subscribe to the channel, give us some feedback and a like. There are more videos coming soon.